hello guys in this video i am going to show you how you can train llama 3 8 billion on any data set huge kudos to this user rumbo dog who has created this collab and all the code plus he has used unsloth which we have covered numerous times on our channel one of the best tool if you want to train or fine tune a model on your own custom data set one of the good things about unsloth is that it enables you to do it all on Google Colab in the free tier. So let's go to our Google Colab and see how can we fine tune or train this Llama 38 billion on our own data set. Of course, you can use any other model or you can use your own custom data set. So let's get started. The first step which we need to do is to change the runtime type. Let's go with T4 GPU courtesy to Google, which are who are very, very uh, generous in providing this. By the way, this is um, Unslots Llama 38 billion instruct trained on replete AI code test data set using the uh, code which you, I will be showing you shortly. And the full training takes around 40 minutes. But I'm not going to show you the whole 40 minutes training, but still I would be showing you the code from this Google, uh, model card on Hugging Face and I will drop the link in video's description too. So let's see. First up, let's install Unsloth and don't worry about the code. I will drop the link to that Hugging Face model card, which has all the code there. Let's wait for it to finish. Takes a bit of a time first time. All it is doing it, it is just installing Unsloth as per your uh, version of CUDA. So let's wait. That is done. And now let's install Galore Torch. So Galore Torch is a sort of new library which enables you to have memory efficient LLM training by gradient low rank projection. And it's quite lightweight, so it shouldn't take too long to get installed. Almost there, I guess. Let's wait for it to finish. Hello, torch is done and now let's specify our 4-bit models which we are going to use as you can see that unsloth enables you to point in lots of models but we are interested in this last one you can even omit the other ones but i'm just going to go with all of this so this is a max sequence length for the context and this is the data type d type and we are just using loading it in 4-bit okay so let's run it this should be quick. And we are loading our model here. As you can see, the model size is just around 5.7 gig. We are already using a fine tuned one. So it shouldn't take too long. And the speed is good. So it'll be done fairly quickly. Model is downloaded. Let's specify our LoRa configuration or low rank adaptation configuration. And this is what we need to specify. Let me give you a quick overview of it. So this is a configuration for the LoRa or low rank adaptation method, which is a technique for fine tuning pre-trained LLMs. First, we are specifying our model in this variable. Then we are specifying R is equal to 16. This is the rank of the low rank approximation used in LoRa. A higher value means a more expressive but also more computationally expensive approximation. Common values are 8 to 128. So we have selected 16. You can even go with 8 if you want to make it a bit more quicker. Then we are specifying the target modules within the language model that we want to apply LoRa to. In this case, it is applied to the query key value output projection layer as well as some additional projection layers such as gate up and down. Then we are specifying LoRa Alpha 16. This is a hyperparameter that controls the strength of the LoRa adaptation. If we specify higher value, it means stronger adaptation. We are specifying LoRa dropout as zero. So this is a dropout rate applied to the LoRa weights. Setting it to zero means no dropout is applied. Bias is none, which specifies whether to use bias terms in the LoRa weights. And we have set it to none. It means there are no biases. And then use gradient checkpointing. We have just specified it to uh, something like unsloth. 
and um, so for, this enables gradient checkpointing which can help reduce memory usage during training unsloth is a specific implementation that uses 30 percent less vram and allows for larger patch sizes then we are specifying random state at 3407 which is setting the random seat for LoRa initialization and we are setting RS LoRa to false which specifies whether to use rack stabilization LoRa or RS LoRa which is a variant of LoRa that helps stabilize the LoRaq approximation and then finally we are specifying loft queue which is another technique for efficient language model inference we are not using that in this configuration so that is all done as you can see and now let's specify our prompt template we are using the standard alpaca one as you can see here where we have assistant and all that stuff and then we are just defining a standard prompt formatting function which is taking the example and then creating human assistant input output and then we are using this uh, data set code test data set from hugging face you can use your own if you like but should be in this alpaca format or if you are using any other format you would need to use that uh, data set and prompt template that is done and now let's specify our trainer and i have another video where i go into very way more detail as what exactly all of these parameters mean so we have defined our parameter uh, our sft trainer here that is done and now let's initialize the training let me quickly grab the command for that all we are doing it we are just doing trainer dot train and then giving our model and then saving it and you see it has started the training with unslot and it is going to take around 40 to 50 minutes depending upon your gpu of course because we are using the free one from google colab so it is going to take 40 minutes as per that hugging face model card once that's done you can either save it locally and use it or you can push it to hugging face just like this person has done so i will let it run because it is going to take a bit of a time so this is a model card as i showed you earlier and then you can read a lot of good stuff from here which um, it has given and then it has also got a lot of information as how exactly uh, you can modify it for example if you want to modify max sequence length you want to use any other model you can do that and then a lot of other information about prompting and stuff so that's it guys i hope that you enjoyed it let me know your thoughts on it if you like the content please consider subscribing to the channel and if you're already subscribed then please share it among your network as it helps a lot thanks for watching